Following the address of the head of Ukraine's Kherson region, Vladimir Saldo, the Russian government has taken the decision to organize assistance to people leaving the region for other regions of the country. We will provide everyone with free accommodation and everything necessary. Those who will decide to stay permanently at their new place will be provided with a home. Well, for more, we can cross to Lviv and speak to our correspondent, Gulliver Krag. Gulliver, what more do we know about these evacuations out of Kherson? Well, the Ukrainian government disapproves of Russia evacuating people to Russia, and any sign that these evacuations are not voluntary would be taken by Ukraine as forced deportations to Russia, which is considered a war crime. Of course, the Ukrainian armed forces make no secret of the fact that they are carrying out an offensive whose aim is to retake Kherson from under Russian occupation. And already in July, President Volodymyr Zelensky recommended residents of the city and the surrounding region to evacuate, as tens of thousands of them have done, coming out into the Ukrainian-held part of Ukraine via Zaporizhia region. Now, the Russians are accusing Ukraine as part of its offensive of shelling the cities of Kherson and Novokhovka, another major town in Kherson region. The Ukrainian government denies this. And I had a look this morning on pro-Russian telegram channels to see if there were any photographs of residential buildings in these two cities that had been um, shelled or damaged. And there were none. I would presume that if such photos existed, they would be being published and distributed as much as possible by pro-Russian and Russian um, agents of communication. Hmm. And Gulliver, you're in the West in Lviv, which has been largely spared in this conflict, but it was targeted by Russian strikes in recent days. What's the latest from there? So there were strikes on Lviv on Monday and Tuesday for the first time since May. They hit two electricity substations in the city. The authorities here are very, very careful to not let people film them or give the precise addresses that were hit. But the hits did take out the electricity supply across most of Lviv and the region for several hours on Monday. By Tuesday, though, it was back on for most residents of the city and the region. And now the whole region has its electricity supply back, though I visited one of the sites this morning, and it's far from having been completely repaired. They have simply uh, got supply coming from other routes, which means that the system is fragile and power cuts are possible. I spoke to two people in the area where the substation was that was hit. One man said he felt like he'd been reborn because he could easily have died, he told me, if the window in his apartment had not withstood the impact of the wave from the explosion, but it did, so he survived unscathed. Another man, a street sweeper, told me that he took shelter behind a traffic uh, sign, behind a road sign, in order to avoid being hit. And he showed me a few um, bits of shrapnel that he'd picked up just afterwards, saying these could easily have hit me. So he was very, very shaken by what had happened. All right, Gulliver, well, we hope you stay safe there. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that update from Lviv. Uh, France 24's Gulliver Craig reporting there.